In the cold, pressure-laden depths of the northeastern Pacific Ocean, 300 miles or nearly 500 kilometers off the Oregon coast, something ancient had begun to stir again. It wasn't sudden. It began with subtle shifts, anomalous readings on pressure recorders, minute movements in the ocean floor, unusual seismic frequencies pulsing like deep underwater drum beats. To the untrained eye, there was little cause for alarm. But among volcanologists monitoring the axial seamount, these tremors were more than mere noise. They were signals, and those signals were growing louder. For decades, axial seamount had played by the rules. This massive underwater volcano perched atop the Juan de Fuca Ridge had erupted roughly every 13 years. Its last event in 2015 had been relatively mild, a manageable outflow of lava that slightly deformed the surrounding terrain, enough to reset the geological clock. The system would then retreat into silence. Researchers at Oregon State University had even begun to view Axial as a kind of model volcano, predictable, cyclical, obedient to tectonic rhythm. But in early 2025, that expectation began to unravel. The first signs were vertical. Sensitive ocean bottom pressure gauges revealed that the summit of Axial had begun to rise. At first, the uplift measured just a few millimeters, but by March, it had reached nearly 20 centimeters or around eight inches, and the rate wasn't slowing. It was accelerating. This vertical swelling was unmistakable evidence of magma rising beneath the crust, inflating the seafloor like a balloon. More alarmingly, the rate of uplift was occurring nearly twice as fast as what had been recorded prior to the 2015 eruption. Monitoring equipment and array of high-precision GPS sensors anchored to the seafloor tracked the movement in real time. The caldera at the summit was not just lifting, it was expanding. The pressure building beneath the crust was no longer symmetrical. One side of the summit was now rising more rapidly than the other, suggesting that magma wasn't simply rising but intruding laterally, shifting the internal balance. This asymmetric pressure caused geologists to worry that slanted fault lines could be forming, lines that might eventually rupture without warning. Submersible drones dispatched to the site captured thermal imagery of the surrounding basalt. In some places, fissures glowed with residual heat. In others, faint sulfuric plumes had begun to rise, evidence of early degassing processes underway. These emissions, subtle yet significant, meant that magma was now only a few hundred meters below the seafloor. For a volcano once considered tame, the changes were both rapid and profound but the danger extended far beyond Axial itself. The volcano sits atop a tectonically active region where the Juan de Fuca plate dives beneath the North American plate. This subduction zone, one of the most dangerous on the planet, is responsible for the Cascadia subduction zone, an area capable of generating earthquakes greater than magnitude 8.5. If a major eruption were to occur at Axial, the shockwaves and energy release could potentially destabilize this delicate geological boundary. Even more worrisome, the seismicity was no longer confined to the summit area. By January, seismometers had begun picking up a series of unusual, low-frequency earthquakes. Tremors that were rhythmic, resonant, and in some cases, sustained for hours at a time. These were not standard tectonic quakes. They moved like waves radiating outward from a single origin point, echoing patterns observed prior to significant eruptions in places like Hawaii's Kilauea and Iceland's Barthabunga. The working theory was that narrow conduits were allowing magma to fracture the rock above in pulsing bursts, each quake like a heartbeat echoing through the oceanic crust. And then came the migration. These rhythmic tremors didn't stay in place. Over weeks, they spread northwestward from the central caldera, forming a directional pattern. Researchers mapped the sequence and realized that the tremors weren't random. They followed a path that mirrored what could be a newly forming lateral dike. If that dike were to breach the seafloor, magma would have a new escape route, 
potentially creating a line of underwater vents stretching for kilometers. Deep sea sonar confirmed this possibility. Small cracks had formed away from the central summit, and these fissures aligned almost perfectly with the tremor path. Geophysicists began to suspect that the volcanic system was expanding beyond its traditional boundaries, its reach extending laterally as magma sought the path of least resistance. If that expansion continued unchecked, the consequences could be staggering. Simultaneous vent openings across the seabed or even flank collapses that could displace massive volumes of seawater. Meanwhile, underwater hydrophones began recording something even stranger. Ultra-low frequency infrasound pulses. These were seismic signals below the threshold of human hearing. Yet, they painted a picture of deep, subterranean activity. Some scientists believe these pulses could represent gas or pressure releases from the lower crust or upper mantle, a region still shrouded in mystery. Others posited they were harmonic tremors tied to gas movement through magma pathways. Either way, they were persistent and growing in strength. Chemical evidence added to the growing concern. In February, vent fields near the summit began to exhibit startling changes. Normally, the hydrothermal vents released a cocktail of sulfur and iron, heated by volcanic rock. But newer readings showed the emergence of helium-3, a rare isotope typically released from Earth's mantle during periods of fresh magma ascent. A spike in helium-3 was considered a strong indicator that new unmixed magma from deep within the Earth was on the move. Autonomous submersibles returned with more data. Temperatures at several key vents had increased by over 30 to 40 degrees Celsius, an enormous shift in just a matter of months. More worrying still, organisms that typically thrived in these vents, giant tube worms, blind shrimp, and deep sea coral, were beginning to disappear or migrate to colder, less active zones. It was an exodus that had been seen before preceding vent collapses or eruptions in other parts of the global mid-ocean ridge system. In certain vent zones, sensors detected a surge in arsenic and manganese signatures of magma-induced rock dissolution. These shifts indicated that the mixing zone between seawater and volcanic fluids was rising, which meant the magma chamber itself was pushing higher into the crust. That migration reduced the thickness of rock separating molten material from ocean water, an increasingly unstable barrier. And if that thin rock cap were breached, it would not be a gentle leak. The sudden contact between magma and seawater could cause a Frito-magmatic explosion, an underwater eruption of stunning violence and speed. The evidence of surface destabilization mounted. High-resolution imaging captured new fractures snaking out from the summit like cracks in glass. These weren't superficial. Some were meters wide and extended for kilometers, cutting through basalt and layers of pillow lava. Sub-bottom profiling revealed shallow gas pockets, methane and carbon dioxide, trapped beneath sediment layers adjacent to these cracks. If magma or a dike were to reach these volatile zones, the result could be a massive, explosive discharge, amplified by steam and gas. In such cases, the ocean does not quench the eruption. It magnifies it. And this wasn't all theoretical. Infrared cameras mounted on remotely operated vehicles recorded shimmering thermoclines, temperature gradients in the water that pulsed in rhythm, as though responding to deep pressure waves. Scientists speculated that these pulses could be influenced by tidal forces, interacting with the magma chamber, or even from rhythmic gas cycling within the volcano's plumbing system. In either case, the evidence was clear. The volcano was not only rising, it was alive, dynamic, and possibly nearing a critical point. By late March 2025, researchers working off Oregon's coast found themselves facing a deepening mystery. The rate of change at Axial Seamount had surpassed anything observed in its recorded history. The seafloor was no longer just swelling, it was cracking, rupturing outward in long, jagged patterns. Sonar imaging from submersibles revealed fresh fissures extending radially from the caldera's core, many of them newly formed in the previous several weeks. Some of these fractures stretch for kilometers, slicing through dense volcanic rock like scars across a battlefield. What startled the scientists most wasn't the size, but the speed. These weren't geological features that formed over years or decades. They had emerged in mere days. 
The prevailing suspicion was that magma was forcing its way laterally, prying apart the seafloor with hydraulic intensity. This process, known as dike intrusion, had the potential to trigger a chain reaction if those fractures reached shallow gas pockets or breached weak points in the seafloor. The consequences could include sudden vent blowouts or explosive underwater eruptions. To better understand the pattern, researchers layered high-resolution sonar with LIDAR and seismic data, building a three-dimensional stress model of Axial's flanks. What emerged was a sobering image, stress lines radiating in a fan shape, with the highest concentration pointing toward the northwest flank. This flank, composed of relatively young lava flows, appeared structurally weaker than other sections. If it failed, the result could be a submarine landslide or mass-wasting event, potentially displacing enough seawater to generate localized tsunamis. Such underwater slides, though not as well known as terrestrial ones, had in the past produced deadly waves along coasts far from their source. Beneath these fractures, sub-bottom profiling identified methane gas layers trapped beneath sediment. These methane pockets, volatile and highly pressurized, posed an additional hazard. If disturbed by a rising dike or rupture, they could flash into explosive gas plumes. When combined with magma and seawater, the result could be what volcanologists call phreatomagmatic activity, a blend of fire, gas, and steam that produces shockwaves powerful enough to crack open the sea floor in violent bursts. Adding another layer of urgency were sharp changes in temperature gradients along the cracks themselves. Areas once geothermally quiet now glowed in thermal scans, some showing heat fluxes three to four times higher than average. In these same regions, marine biologists reported mass die-offs of benthic creatures. Deep-sea coral, brittle stars, and filter-feeding invertebrates had perished en masse. The suspected cause? Shifts in pH, salinity, or oxygen, likely the result of volcanic gases percolating through new cracks and poisoning the immediate ecosystem. To confirm this, autonomous chemical sensors were lowered into the most active zones. What they detected was unsettling, concentrations of hydrogen sulfide, arsenic, and other toxic elements far above baseline levels. These emissions indicated deep interactions between magma and seawater, where acidic, mineral-laden fluids boiled upward through permeable rock. This wasn't just surface chemistry, it was evidence of an evolving magmatic system, one growing increasingly unstable. But the most puzzling development came in April. Magnetometers stationed near the seamount began picking up anomalies, subtle fluctuations in the Earth's magnetic field. At first, researchers suspected noise from solar activity or equipment malfunction. But the pattern soon repeated, again and again, on a consistent 11-hour cycle. The rhythmic oscillations resembled a heartbeat, pulsing quietly beneath the waves. One theory suggested that superheated fluids circulating around the magma chamber, laden with iron and conductive minerals, were generating these brief magnetic shifts. As the fluids moved through the crust, rapid heating and pressure changes may have altered local magnetic fields in bursts, not unlike natural electromagnetic pulses. Another theory proposed that shifting lava tubes beneath the volcano were acting like magnetic conductors, twisting and bending the field lines as magma surged through them. To investigate, a team from Oregon State deployed squid sensors, superconducting quantum interference devices aboard deep-sea drones. These instruments, capable of detecting changes in magnetic fields at the nano-Tesla level, offered unprecedented sensitivity. The data they returned was both fascinating and troubling. Not only were the oscillations confirmed, but they were accompanied by localized polarity reversals, temporary magnetic flips in regions surrounding the caldera. These flips coincided with helium spikes, rising vent temperatures, and gas emissions, strongly suggesting a tight coupling between magnetic behavior and active magma movement. As more data came in, a curious correlation emerged. Satellite-based magnetosphere sensors detected faint, synchronized signals rising into the ionosphere above axial. If these readings were accurate, they implied that axial seamount might be emitting not only seismic and acoustic energy, but electromagnetic signals powerful enough to reach the edge of space. This strange discovery raised entirely new questions about the interaction between deep Earth processes and Earth's magnetic environment. Though speculative, some scientists pondered whether such signals could influence deep-sea animal behavior. Migratory species that rely on geomagnetic navigation might be affected, 
as could bioluminescent organisms sensitive to electric or magnetic changes. While such effects remained unproven, the prospect highlighted how little was still understood about the full reach of submarine volcanic systems. To most, these developments were fascinating anomalies, but to those tasked with hazard assessment, the growing list of symptoms pointed to a volcano nearing critical pressure. The system was no longer simply rising or warming, it was changing form, emitting new types of energy, and triggering cascading effects in the surrounding geology, chemistry, and biology. Axial seamount had become dynamic, communicative, and increasingly unpredictable. Its once orderly behavior had given way to complexity and its familiar cycles were breaking down. With each passing day, the warning signs grew harder to ignore. By mid-2025, what had begun as a slow, steady awakening beneath the ocean floor had grown into a complex and potentially volatile transformation. Axial seamount was no longer behaving like the patient, predictable giant of years past. It had become something else entirely. A system under pressure, flexing its subterranean muscles, showing signs not only of imminent eruption, but of broader instability capable of affecting the Pacific Northwest far beyond the seafloor. Researchers across disciplines, geophysicists, chemists, marine biologists, and data analysts converged on the conclusion that this volcano was no longer a solitary hazard. It was a key node in a sprawling, interconnected network of tectonic stress, hydrothermal activity, and deep mantle energy. From tremors and rising magma to gas emissions, electromagnetic pulses, and ecosystem disturbances, all the indicators pointed toward an inevitable release. And yet, if you found this story of deep sea mystery and geological awakening compelling, consider sharing it with others who care about the hidden forces shaping our world. Like this post, subscribe for more real science stories, and leave a comment below. What do you think is really happening beneath the Pacific Ocean? Because down there, in the dark, something ancient is stirring. And this time, it may not go back to sleep.